In this video, we will use the IPL data set. We will upload that data onto Amazon S3 as a data storage. We will use Databricks environment. We will write Apache Spark code for transformation and build our logic. We will use SQL to analyze our data and build visualization on top of it to understand more about our data set. We will be finding answers to a lot of different questions. So without wasting time, let's get started. And before you move forward, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you are new here. So let's start this project by understanding the basics of architecture diagram. Okay, so we will be using the IPL data set. IPL is an Indian cricket premier league, very popular. What we will do, we will use this data set and we will upload or load this data onto the Amazon S3. Amazon S3 stands for simple storage service, especially used for storing any types of data. Okay, it is an object storage. So you can store any data that you want, a CSV, parquet file, audio, video, anything that you want, you can store it here. Okay, once you do that, then we will use the Databricks workspace. First of all, we will use Apache Spark to write the transformation code. So what we will do, we will read this data using the Spark code. Then we will do the transformation that we will apply some business logics on top of it. After that, we will do the SQL analytics. So we will write some SQL queries. We will join some of the tables to understand the trends of the IPL data set. We will try to find some insights. Once we find the insights, then we will do the final visualizations on top of it. So this is a complete architecture diagram, very small project, but this will help you to understand a lot of things about Databricks, Apache Spark, SQL, reading data, how to transform them. So we will be doing a lot of different things in this project. The core understanding or the learning of this project is to learn how to write Apache Spark code. Okay. We will be mainly focusing on the writing side of Apache Spark code and understanding how Spark code is written. All of these different things such as visualization, SQL queries are the add-on on top of it to give you the better understanding of the entire process. Okay. So this is the architecture diagram. Uh, you can refer this anytime you want. I want to start this and let's understand the basics of Apache Spark first because if you're understanding Apache Spark this then I want to give you the understanding in the entire ecosystem of Apache Spark. So one is we have the Spark code. This is the heart of Apache Spark that is responsible for executing every code that you submit to Apache Spark application. Okay, you will understand about the entire thing. So don't worry about it. right now. Just understand the components. Then we have the Spark SQL attached to it. So if you want to write the SQL queries inside Apache Spark application, you can easily do that using Spark SQL. Then we also have the start Spark Streaming. That basically means if you want to handle the real-time data, if you want to process the real-time data that you see onto the Google Maps, Uber, okay, you can easily do that also using Spark Streaming. If you want to run the machine learning application on large data, it is also possible inside the Spark. And if you want to process the graph graphical data space that is usually seen on the social media website, you can also do that on the Spark. So this is the basic components attached to Spark. Okay. Now this is the core architecture of Apache Spark. Now I want to give you the understanding about this architecture using the nodes. Okay. So first of all, let's understand what is Apache Spark. Apache Spark is a unified compute engine and a set of libraries for parallel data processing on a compute cluster. That basically means let's say if you want to process a huge amount of data, right? Let's say if you want to process one GB of data, you can easily do that on your single computer. You don't need a lot of storage. You don't need a lot of processing power. If you have one GB of data, you can easily perform that operation and process this entire data in your single computer. But what's, what if you want to process petabytes of data or like thousand GBs of data? If you want to process a thousand GB of data, you need, first of all, the storage system for that at least one terabytes of data you need. Okay. But what if you have like hundred or thousand terabytes of data, you won't be able to store that inside your computer. You need the larger storage system. And after storing, you also need to process that data. And all of these data will have billions of rows. If you want to process them, you need some kind of framework that can process this data on the large scale. So Apache Spark is basically a framework. What it does, it divides your data into the multiple partitions. It processes that data onto the large clusters of machines. Okay. It will do the processing and it will combine the output at the end. So this is the core idea of Apache Spark. It is a unified compute engine. That basically means we have thousands of machines working together, unified compute engine and a set of library for parallel data processing, right? If you have like billions of rows, you need to chunk that data into multiple parts, process them, and then finally combine the output. So this is the core idea of Apache Spark is to process large scale data 
in a distributed way so that you can process it faster and get the output within few seconds okay so again this is a component that we already understood at the lower level api we have the rdds and distributed variables so this is a basic spark toolkit we have the lower level api which is the rdd and distributed variables then we have the structured api this is what we will be mainly working on we have the data frame sql data set and on top of that you have the advanced analytics some packages available and the structured streaming okay all of these are the different toolkits available inside the apache spark let's understand the architecture of apache spark okay so again we understood right typically when you think of a computer you think of a you think of a one single machine that you use for playing games or watching videos okay single machines do not have enough power and resources to perform computation on huge information so we need a clusters of machine a cluster is basically the group of individual machine combined together so if i have like five pcs okay i can just uh, connect all of these five pcs together that will become one cluster so entire cluster will act as a single computer so even if you have like five machines available that cluster will be considered as a one compute resource okay now you can use these multiple resources to run your apache spark code now it is not just about just getting all of these machines together and then you tell the uh, all of these machines to process the data you need a proper framework that can actually manage to work across all of these different machines okay so a group of machine alone is not powerful you need a framework to coordinate work across them and spark is mainly designed for them okay spark manages and coordinates the execution of tasks across the cluster of computers so you understand right we have like thousands of machine but apache spark what it, what it will do it will manage and coordinate all of the execution that you send onto these thousands machine okay so it is responsible for that so this is the architecture of apache spark application as you can see two things are important driver process and the executor and we have the cluster manager cluster manager is basically the managing driver process and the executor so let's understand these two things we have the driver process okay driver process runs your main function of apache spark it is kind of like the manager of apache spark if you want if, whenever you whenever you submit any code driver process make sure this code runs successfully all of the outputs are taken care of all of the metadata driver process will take care of it okay so it maintains the information about the spark application it responds to the user input analyze distributes and schedule work across the different executors so driver process is a manager then we have the executor processes executor processes are the actual machines that execute your work so when you say do 2 plus 2 executor process will make sure it does that computation and driver process will keep eye on that that executor process performs this operation okay so executing code assigned by the driver process and reporting the state of computation back to the driver process from the executor process so this is the responsibility of the executor process now there are many different things related to apache spark but this is the basics of it we have the executor process and we have the driver process these are the mainly two things that you need to understand to execute this entire project now again spark supports multiple language you can write code in scala java python sql r now you need to understand the spark session so whenever you write your apache spark code the default variable will be created which is the entry point for the spark driver which is called as a spark okay you control your spark application through the driver process called as a spark session so when you start writing the spark code you need some entry point and your entry point is your spark variable okay so that the thing that we understood about the driver process and the executor so when you start working on the real world application the driver process is usually stored inside the spark session okay so whenever you use the variable spark this is a default variable whenever you configure your spark environment this is where you start with so whenever you print your spark variable you will get something like this which is basically your spark session this is a default variable you can also create your own spark session so don't worry about it we will do this when we actually do the hands-on practice but understand this using this spark variable you can do every single thing in apache spark if you want to create a data frame if you want to write the sql queries all of these things can be easily done using the spark session okay so this so this particular thing is very important when you start writing your spark application code so this was the basic about apache spark now there are few things that you might need to understand one is the concept of data frame data frame is same as a spreadsheet so if you have the basic understanding about the python it's basically the row and column format where you can store your data in structured way in spark all of these data are stored distributedly so one part of the data might store onto machine a second part of the data might get stored into machine b so all of these information are stored distributedly 
Okay, that is the one concept that you need to understand. Second thing you need to understand is a transformation. So whenever you run any code inside the Spark, right? Such as like this, uh, you have the data frame my range and you perform some operation. Let's say if you want to divide the number by modulo 2. Whenever you execute this in the normal Python, you will get the output then and there. But in the Spark, it will not execute this particular code. What it will do, it will wait till you assign an action. Okay, there are multiple types of actions available. So the basic idea is that whenever you write your transformation block, Spark will start stacking different transformation logic on top of each other. Transformation logics are basically the business logic that you want to apply. It can be like filtering some data, removing null values, filling that null values, adding to color. These are called as a transformation. Okay, so whenever you write the transformation code, Spark will create the entire plan for the execution and then Whenever you perform the action, okay, action is like can be count, show, all of these are the different actions available. So whenever you perform the action, Spark will execute this entire graph that is created. Now in the backend, it does a lot of different things. It creates the logical plan, it creates the physical plan. All of these things are the backend working of it. But for this project, you don't really need to understand this. I have covered all of these in my Apache Spark course. So if you're really interested in learning spark in depth then you can definitely choose to enroll into that but for this project i just gave you the basic understanding of the driver process and the executor process and then using this knowledge you can execute this entire project and learn about the basics of apache spark and complete one good project onto the ipl data set okay so this is the entire goal of this project after spark we need to understand about the data bricks okay so data bricks is basically a software that supports the apache spark environment so let's say if you want to configure Apache Spark in your local PC, what you will have to do, you will have to install JVM, you will have to get all of the packages related to Apache Spark, configure the environment path. And after a lot of errors, you will be able to configure the Apache Spark in your single machine. Now, if you want to do this on your on-premise center, let's say if you have like thousands of machines, and if you want to do that, that will be very difficult task because you will have to think about the scaling, you will have to think about the storage, networking. There are so many different components that you will have to take care of it. So instead of doing that, Databricks is a company that tells you that don't worry about all of these backend working. We will take care of that for you. Just click on the button. Just click on the start button. You will be able to have the Apache Spark environment created for you and focus on writing and executing your code. So just focus on the business side. Don't worry about the infrastructure side of the thing. So, so that is the core idea of Databricks is to give you the environment to execute Apache Spark code. Now on top of that, they also provide many different things such as they have the lake house architecture they provide that sql data warehouses machine learning so they have multiple things that they provide on top of it yeah but the core idea of databricks is just to power the apache spark environment now this much information is enough to execute this entire project because you have the understanding about the sql in the python that i assume okay the reason you are learning spark is because you have the basic understanding about sql and the python a little bit data warehouse we will be focusing mainly on the Spark and you will learn everything about Spark. The major thing for this project, you will understand about the Databricks, a little bit about the Amazon S3 and we will do the final visualization. So this is the entire goal of this project. Now you got the, now you got the basic understanding of it. Now let's understand about the data set that we will be using in this project. Okay. And then we will start the execution. Now this is the data set that is available onto this website called the data.world. Now this is the IPL data till 2017. This is not the latest data, but uh, again, we understood that we want to learn Apache Spark. We don't want to analyze the data and find the useful insights. Okay, this is not the goal of this project. This is, the goal of this project is to use the IPL data set, whichever that is available. This is a good data set because it has like five different files for us to work on it. You can use this data set to understand how to write the basic Apache Spark code by yourself. Okay, so. This data set contains the ball by ball data of IPL season. Okay, there are around 637 matches, including the 2000, a complete data warehouse. So it has a lot of information about each and every single ball of the data. This data set has the ball by ball data for the IPL till the 2017 season. Okay, you can get the source of this data, till the actual source of this data. So if you want to get the data from this source, you can also do that. But this data is pr pretty much organized around five csv different files available if you're a cricket fan and if you understand the cricket then you can use this data to build your own project now these are the different data available we have the ball by ball csv we have the information about the matches players player match and team okay so what i will do i will just click onto it and understand one by one now let's understand the dictionary first okay data dictionary basically means different types of columns and what they mean so as you can see we have like five 
uh, CSV files available. First is the ball by ball CSV. This CSV data contains the information about each and every single ball. Okay, whenever you deliver a ball in a cricket, which player hit that ball? Was it a one run, six run, four? Uh, who balled it? Who was the who balled it? At which stadium this ball was? Based a lot of different information that are attached to every single ball. So you will find it here. We have the match ID, the individual matches. Okay, we will have that. Then we have the over. So this is like 15th over, 14th over, 13th over. Ball ID, ball ID is was it the first ball, second ball, third ball. Okay, innings number. Innings number basically means was it the first inning. So in IPL, it's usually the first inning and the second inning. Okay, person who bats and the person who ball first will do the batting then we have the team batting team balling striker batting position extra so if there is like wide no ball then we have the number of run score this is a very important column so you can find a lot of insights during the run score so what is the four one run zero run four run you might have the six a lot of different information are available extra runs based on the extra runs extra runs so wide leg buys buys no ball penalty just by understanding the column name you will understand what type of data it contains so you need to have like basic understanding of the cricket to understand this then we have the ball is extra out type uh if this guy got out based on the uh, catch bold run out lbw retired hurt stumped again every single detail of information was this player hurt caught and bold so uh you do the balling and if you hit the bat you get caught, then the information about that hit wicket, obstructing field, bowler wicket, and the date of the match, season, striker, okay, non striker, who was in the striking position. This is a player, okay, player ID. So, who, which player was playing, which player was in the non striker position, each and every single ball of the information, okay. Then, who was the bowler? Again, this is the ID of that particular bowler, which can be joined using the player ID. Then, we have the player out, fielders, striker, there's some primary key. SK okay all of these are the information available inside this data ball by ball then we have the data available on the match level so here are like the different match match uh, primary key and then we have the match ID this is the team Royal Jaya Bangalore versus the team 2 so at which day this uh, match happened okay then we have the season here where did it happen city name country name who won the toss who won the match what was the toss decision or uh, win type so did they win by runs or the wickets what was the final outcome man of the match who was the man of the match what was the win margin and the country id okay like this we have the player information again if you have the, if you're a cricket fan you will be able to understand this data pretty much okay then we have the player primary key then player match key match id so this stores the information about single player okay on that match how did this player actually perform okay who was the Opposite keeper, player keeper, captain, every single thing about that in that player match will be get stored here. Then this is the, just the player information. Okay. So who is the player such as Raul Dravid? Okay. His date of birth, batting hand, bat, bowling skill, and the country name. Like this, we will have the player information. Each and every single player is stored here. And then at the end, we have the team information. So we have around 12 teams available in this year. So we will have information about those. So again, just by understanding and looking at the data, you should get understanding about what each and every column means. Uh, you can check the data dictionary just to understand all of these columns. We also have the schema type available. So you can understand whether it is string, date, integer values, all of these things. So this is the basics about data set. Now what you can do, you can uh, download this data and upload it manually on the, your Amazon S3. Uh, if you have the uh, AWS account, it is pretty simple. All you have to do is go onto the AWS bucket all you have to all you have to create is your own AWS account and create your bucket. I have done I have taught you this particular thing so many times on my YouTube channel, so it should be pretty clear now. I just want to go on to the next step. That is a, a Spark application. So if you don't have AWS account, don't worry about it. What I've done is that I have already uploaded all of this CSV data onto this bucket. This is publicly ac accessible. So if you want, you can use my bucket and access the data. If you want to create your own project and have the ownership of the project then you can just download the data from this website okay you will find the data available uh it is just click on to this and click on the download files you will be able to get this data and download it in your pc once you do that then you can manually go and upload this data or you can also have the mechanism to upload this data but this is a pretty static data set so you can directly 
create the S3 bucket and upload your data. And then based on that, you can write the code in your Apache Spark. Okay. But if you want to use my S3 bucket, totally fine. Go for it. So this was everything that you needed to understand about this data set. Now, again, I'm telling you the goal of this project is about writing Apache Spark code. So we will be heavily focusing on that and the syntax side of it, the basics of it. The goal of this project is not to get the business logic right. Okay. Because there will be a lot of transformation that we will write that might not make sense. But again, that is not the final outcome that we are mainly looking for. We are mainly looking for is to write the Apache Spark code by ourselves. Now, before we move forward, I just want to say like this is a free project and you will learn a lot of things in this. But again, this is just to hold you. I can't cover every single thing in one hour of the video. So if you are interested in learning about all of these different things such as Python, SQL, Data Warehouse, the Snowflake and Apache Spark with Databricks for data engineers, then you should definitely check out my courses. I have put a lot of hard work building these courses. These are in detail courses. Python and SQL are the foundational courses, but the core of working start with the data warehouse and Apache Spark and I will have more courses added to it. So if you are interested in upskilling your career in data engineering, then you should definitely check out my courses. You will find the link in the description and let's continue with our execution. So let's start with our project execution. So the first thing that we need here is the Databricks account. Okay, so all you have to do is just write Databricks on Google or Databricks. Then you can just open this Databricks page. Over here, all you have to do is click on the, onto the Try Databricks. Okay, uh, you have to fill the basic information such as first name, last name, email address, company name. So I'll just pull my basic information. I'll add my email address. Once you do that, uh, you, you can add your company name, title, title can be if you are working as a data engineer, you just put the data engineer. Phone number is optional. If you want, you just put your country name and then click onto the continue. Once you fill your basic information, then you will be redirected to this page. Now, Databricks supports three environment. Okay, we already understood about the basic architecture of the Databricks. It supports the three environment, AWS, Azure and Google Cloud. Now, if you are using Databricks for the professional use, you can select one cloud. This usually you do it if you have your existing infrastructure available on one of the cloud platforms. So let's say if my company is using AWS for some data pipeline work and some data storage, I can go with the AWS. Same with the Azure and the Google Cloud platform. But this is the paid one because when you select one cloud provider, it actually deploys the Databricks on your cloud provider using the EC2 machines and all of the resources. What we really need to do is we need the free version. That is the personal use. Get started with the community edition. This is completely freely available. You don't have to pay anything for this. All you have to do is just uh, figure out this captcha in this direction. Submit this. Once this is done, you will receive an email. Okay. You just start with the community edition. You will receive an email about the, your account activation activate the Databricks account and you can get started with it. Okay. I already have the Databricks account available. Okay. So this is what it looks like. This is the community edition available. Uh, over here, you will see some of the things such as you can create the notebox, you have the workspace. So everything that you do on your Databricks account, it will be available over here. Then we have the search feature. We have three things catalog. This is where all of your databases will store. This is a compute. We will create our own compute service. And then we have the workflow. Okay. Workflow is not available under the community edition. But if you have the upgraded version, if you use the Azure Databricks or if you upgrade your community version, you can access the workflow and more of the features. Let's start it first. We will create our compute because this is where we will run our Apache Spark code. Okay. So click onto the create compute over here. Or uh, let me see if you can see it. Yeah, you can see it. Then give the compute name. It can be whatever you want. So I'll give this as IPL project cluster. Okay, something like this. Here, as you can see, we have the zero worker and one driver node. We already understood the basics about Apache Spark. In that, we understood that we have a worker node, which is the executor process and the driver process. So our driver process, we have like 15 GB memory and the two cores. And for the worker node, we don't have anything because for the tutorial purposes, community addition, this is enough. Okay, 16 GB of RAM is quite huge if you are working on a smaller data set. But if you go with the upgraded version, you have the options to choose from like minimum worker to the maximum worker based on your scalability and your code, it will automatically add new machines so that you can easily run your Apache Spark code. Okay. Then we have the runtime. Runtime here, you can select any. So we will go with the default one. We will not touch anything. Here, if you click onto the Spark, you can add some environment variables. So if you want to provide some settings, you can 
do it over here and then you can just click on the create compute this will take some time to create the compute service so as you can see you can track all of the basic so configuration is available over here if you create all of the notebooks that will be tracked here all of the libraries are available here so if you want to install some of the external libraries you can easily do it here then we have the log spark ui driver log so all of these are mainly the configuration side of the things that you can easily track it on the compute level so let's wait for this to getting so our compute so our compute is getting created while this is getting created we can start working on our notebook file okay so all you have to do is just click onto this create button and click onto the notebook now this is where we will write our code okay so first of all i just want to give the name to this notebook which is the ipl data analysis spark okay you can give whatever you want then we have the multiple options available here okay we have the python sql scala and r we will write our code in python language which is the py spark but you can also write SQL, Scala and R code in the Databricks. Here yeah, you have to select your compute service. So over here, all you have to do is click onto this IPL project cluster. It is currently getting connected. Once this is connected, then you can start writing your Apache Spark code. Okay, everything else is fine. You don't have to worry about this. This is just a basic Jupyter notebook environment where you can write all of your Apache Spark code. Okay, now about the data set, right? As I already told you, we have all of the data set available onto the S3 bucket so that we can directly start accessing them and writing our code. Okay, so this is the publicly accessible bucket that I've already published. Either you can create your own S3 bucket and make it public and then directly access it. You can also use the configuration setting by providing the access key and the secret key if you don't want to publish this. But for the simplicity, a lot of people might not have the AWS account or there might be many people who don't want to go through this uh, uploading data stage. What you can do, you can directly use my bucket and start accessing the data and mainly focus on the Apache Spark code so that you don't have to worry about uploading all of this data by yourself. So we already understood about our data set that is available over here. So we understood about all of these columns. Okay. Now what I want to do, I want to mainly focus on writing the Apache Spark code and we will write all of the code by ourselves. Now I have provided all of this code onto my GitHub repository, but I will highly encourage you to write this code by yourself so that you get the hands-on practice and the confidence that you can write Apache Spark code by yourself. Okay, so the first thing that we want to do is create the Spark session. Now, there is a default Spark session available. Uh, whenever you write the Spark keyword, you will see the Spark session is available. But to follow the best practice, we will create our own Spark session as per our application. And for that, it is very simple. All you have to do is write something like this from. Let me just check my OBS if you guys can. Uh, see this okay, from okay yeah so from we will write our code so so we will write code so we so we will write our code from pyspark.sql import spark session okay spark session is available inside this package and we will create the session create session as spark is equal to Spark session, uh, this is the Spark session that we are going to use. Dot builder, wait, builder dot app name. Here we can give our app name. In this case, it is our IPL data analysis dot either get or create. Okay. So if we already have this app available, we will get it. Or if we don't have it, we, can, we will create it. All you have to do is just write execute this you can hit the shift enter or you can just uh, click onto this bu button uh, to run this code then if you do the spark session now we have the spark session available for this particular app that we created okay so we can easily track entire thing the entire session onto this app now once this is done we can start writing our code for the apache spark and for that first of all we want to read the data from all of these bucket okay so this is where we have stored our data so we want to read this data one by one and also do some basic transformations on top of it so what we will do we will read this data and the syntax to read this data is pretty simple all you have to do is let's say i want to read this ball by ball csv okay the first data all i all i have to all i have to write is that ball by ball data frame because i'm reading the data frame then i will use the spark uh, session which is our spark variable dot read dot format inside i will provide the csv because the csv is my format 
there are some options that you can give such as option header to because my first row is header and I will just provide the uh, path oh wait I just ran this by mistake let me just close this okay I will provide the path and the path is copy the s3 URI okay this is the exact path that you can use and this will read our CSV if I run this this will read the data from this s3 bucket which is the publicly available so you can easily access it and then if I do show file let's wait for this to complete so currently it is running you can also click on to this to check all of the logs and if I can see I was able to get all of these column values here so okay if I if you do the show file this is the action that we talked about if you do the show file it will display all of the data so as you can see we have the match id over id ball innings all of this and these are the actual data that is getting printed so this is the data frame that we were able to read but there's a problem with this okay and the problem is that all of these columns are into the string format okay as you can see all of these are into the string format uh if you go here you will see we have the integer 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 value boolean values integer values date values we have the different values available for the different columns now to do this we have two options one is what we can do is that we can write the infer schema as true okay there is one more option available which is option infer schema okay as true if i do this if i run this and then we if we check the data type you will understand it spark will automatically try to understand the type of the data that is stored inside the csv file and it will assign that data type to that particular call okay so let's wait for this and as you can see we are able to read this data into the proper format uh, that is being uh, generated by the spark okay so this is automatic we did not provide anything but here we might have some other issues so for example in this case we have the retired hurt uh, lbw run out bolt all of these are into the boolean format but if i check here uh if, if you check all of these are automatically converted into the integer format so this is a problem right because spark is not able to understand all of these things automatically because it is considering it as an integer because it doesn't know this is a boolean value or this is an integer value or this is a string value for that we need to create our own schema and this is the best practice that you do in the real world so that when you are reading a data when you are reading a data from any external source you have to define your own set of structured schema so that no matter what type of data comes into it it will go through this step by step checking process that all of these data are into the proper data type format okay and you will understand uh, about this right now so let me just close this so that we will have the much better picture of this we have something called as a struct field and defining a schema into the apache spark and it looks something like this okay first we need to import this uh, packages if you want to define the structure schema so what we will do we will add one cell on top of this where we will import all of the packages okay so we have something called as from pyspark.sql types import we have struct field comma struct type okay these are the two things we need to define the entire structure and then we might have another thing such as we need to define integer type we have string type we have boolean type we have date type okay these are the different type available we have the decimal type okay so these are the different type that is available into the apache spark so you can use these different type to assign different values to that certain column uh you will understand what i mean okay so just run this so once you run this all you have to do is define the structure schema and it looks something like this we have like ball by ball df or uh, instead of df we will write schema we are defining a schema is equal to struct type okay between bracket we will add a subscript and then we will define each and every field so struct field and in this what is my first column my first column is match id okay so i will copy the name of this i will put the name here which is a match id comma here uh, i have the integer type because this match id is an integer so i will add integer type okay and this can be nullable so i'll just keep it as true so when you keep the true as this means this field can have the null values okay then the same thing we will have to repeat for the 
second column which is the over id uh, i'll put it over here and then for the over id we also add the integer then we have the ball and the innings number so we will do the same for them uh, you can add a comma here you can add a comma here uh, so i will do it for the same ball id and i will do the same for the innings okay then uh, let me just do this then we have team batting that is a string value okay so what i will do i will do the team batting and instead of integer type now i will define the string type because this is a string value but okay this is done now if i scroll down you will see there are so many different columns available and till now what we need to but till now what we have been doing is that we were manually creating all of this stuff type but now we have ai okay so instead of you doing all of these things what you can do you can utilize the ai tool so what i can do is here is that i can just copy paste this entire thing okay i do copy i paste it on the chat gpt i will say okay this is my data frame schema okay i want you to generate Vice Park schema okay struct schema using or uh, using the schema of my data frame okay something like this and all you have to do is just paste this if you wait okay it will automatically generate this entire thing for you okay you don't have to do all of these things by yourself this is the power of AI because if I do this one by one it will take around 10 15 minutes okay because i'll have to go manually and do all of these things copy paste the stuff but if i directly use the ai ai is working for me it is directly generating all of this code for me so this is how you increase your productivity okay uh, you don't wait you don't do all of these things manually you need to understand how you can utilize this ai tools in your workflow so that you can focus on the important aspect of your code execution rather than focusing on the manual work so i got this entire thing generated from the chat gpt i can directly copy paste this uh, and i can directly replace it over here okay so instead of me manually doing all of these things i have all of this uh struct field created like boolean type i have the date type integer type everything is sorted out for me so i don't have to worry about all of these things so the same thing now what we need to do instead of this let's put this on the top okay so i will cut paste this and I will put it i will put it on the top here so first i will generate the schema and i will run this so this will store all of the schema information now while i'm reading the data frame uh, let me just remove this infer schema what you can do you can do something like this dot schema okay and provide the schema name which is the ball by ball schema and if i put this here and if i run this now while reading the data frame spark will add the schema information okay to this particular schema and as you can see now we have all of these column values as a boolean we don't have it as an integer so this will make sure every time that we read this uh, data frame from the external source if there are any uh inconsistency in the data spark will automatically apply this schema on top of it if there is an error it will give you the error if there is no error you will be able to see the entire output so this is the power of creating the structure schema now i will just do the show file okay and uh, let's wait for this and you will be able to see the entire output generated for you okay so this is sorted now what i will do let me remove this and then we will have to do this entire operation for all of the data frame okay so this was for this i will do it for the this one which is the mass schema which is available here the math schema the same operation we will do it uh, i will highly encourage you to use the chat gpt in your case i already have created all of these things so do, we don't waste time on to this manual work so this is the math schema again same thing you can just copy paste the math schema from here okay put it on the chat gpt generate this entire code and the same way we will have the math tf where we will read the data provide the schema information header to provide the csv done okay we don't have to worry about this manual task all you have to do is just provide the information and we are done same with the other file so instead of match then we have the play player match so i will do the same for that okay uh then we have the player match uh which is player schema okay so i will also do it for this 
So this is a player match and this is a player. And then the last one was the team. Okay. So I will do the same operation. I have the code available so that we don't waste time doing the same thing again and again. I again provided you the code onto the GitHub repository so you can also go. But again, for the practice, if you write all of these code by yourself, so it will get registered inside your brain. So this is what it looks like. Okay. If you just see it from the outside, okay, you understand this is the struct type and this is the struct field. But as you write by yourself all of this code, you will understand you might make mistakes in the subscript. You might make mistake while writing this entire syntax. So at least for the practice, write all of this code by yourself so that you get the confidence that you can write the Apache Spark code by yourself. Okay. So these are the five data frames that we were able to read. And now what we want to do, we want to work on to the transformation block. Now the transformation is the core of Apache Spark because this is the final logic that you apply on the data set. It can be removing null value. It can be adding two columns and creating the third column. It can be filtering some of the data. There are different types of transformation functions that you can do. This is generally comes under the structured API. Okay. I've covered this in detail into my Apache Spark course. So you will understand everything from the backend. But in general, it is basically the set of logics that you apply on the data frame so that you can get the final output. Actually, the transformation will be based on the business logic. There might be certain requirements from the data scientists or data analysts that they want these columns into this proper format. This is what the transformation really looks like. Okay. Here you filter out all of the information that you don't need and only pass it forward the information that you really need. In our case, we will do the basic transformation just to understand how to write Apache Spark code. Okay. The goal of this project is not to create the business friendly outcome that is true for the business. The goal of this project is to understand how to write Apache Spark code because, because we are mainly focusing on the technical side of the things. We don't want to worry about the business side because this is not the real business right now that we are worrying about. This is just a test data set. Okay. We want to learn Apache Spark for the business side. Once you get into the company, they will tell you what they need at the end so that you can write the code according to that requirement and generate the output. Okay. So we will do some basic transformation and I've already created all of this transformation for you. So filter to include only valid deliveries. So I want to exclude wide and the no balls from the our data set. And for that, we will do something like this. We have the our data frame available, which is the ball by ball DF. Okay. And let's write this code by ourselves, which is ball by ball DF is equal to filter and then we'll do something like this uh yeah column okay inside the column i have the column available as whites okay and uh, equal to equal to zero so i don't want to have the whites and column no balls no pause is equal to is equal to zero. Let me just check if all of these things make sense. This is fine. Okay, I have this. I can also include bracket here. So make sure the brackets are fine. So what this does is that it excludes the whites and the no balls from the data set because we don't want whites and no balls for our final analysis. Again, depends on the business requirement, but for now, just to understand the transformation function, we are adding, we are excluding the whites and the no balls. We just want the proper delivery. Okay. So if I run this, this will result column is not defined. Okay. So we need to import the caller and to import the column, we have some packages available. So what I will do from here, top go to the top from functions import i can directly import all of the functions available or i can import some of the functions that we will use so such as column we will use when we will use sum we will use average and we will use row number okay so i will run this so this is importing all of the functions from the sql package to our notebook now if i run this I'm able to generate the output this output is basically we were able to exclude this entire whites and the no balls from our data frame. But Spark did not run this code right now. First time, Spark will not execute the entire thing and give it the output. We are already understood about the lazy evaluation. That means the more transformation block we write, Apache Spark will be able to convert the entire thing, the entire logical plan for that, and then execute the final code once you write the action. Okay. 
So these are the concept available. Uh, we have the lazy evaluation. Okay, it doesn't. So Spark. So we have the. So we already understood about the lazy evaluation. Spark will wait until the very last moment to execute the final graph. So this is the kind of plan it creates. It creates the entire logical plan and the physical plan. And based on that, it optimizes the entire transformation block and then gives you the output. I go in detail about all of these things into my Apache Spark code. Want to understand about the Spark in depth with the Databricks? Then you can think about enrolling into the code. So this is our first transformation. Like this, we can write more transformation blocks on top of it. So let me get another transformation block. And in this transformation, what we will write: calculate the total and average runs scored in each match and inning. So it is very simple. You can write something like this: total. We will create the new data frame: total and average runs is equal to ball by ball df dot group by okay and i will add match id comma innings number dot aggregation here based on the match id and the innings i want to get the total and the average run score in each so what i will do i will do the first total for total i will do, do the run score this is a column available i will give the alias so that we understood it properly, alias as total runs, okay. And let me add the comma. And then we need the average of the runs code also. Runs code dot alias, and I will do the average average runs, okay. So it's fine. So calculate the total average runs scored in each match and inning. So I'm just grouping by the match ID and the innings ID. And then I'm just running this. So once you execute this, you will see we applied some filters on top of it. And then we created the new data frame. This data frame that we will use in the final visualization. Like this, you can write multiple functions. So I have already written some of the transformation block. I do transformation block. Then we can also do something like this, which is the window function. So if you want to understand how the window function works in the purchase part. So in this window function, calculate the running total of runs each match for each over okay for each match and each over so first of all let's create the logical plan for our window function which is window spec okay and we will do something like this window dot partition by first of all we have the match id comma we have the innings number dot order by over id okay so this is where I'm like creating the logic for my window function and then I will do ball by ball df is equal to ball by ball df dot width column this is when I want to create the new column and I will add the new column as running till runs and then I will apply my logic which is sum I want to get the running total of the runs This is my window spec so i will apply that okay and let's run this probably we will get the one error because window is not defined and for that we will uh, need to import the window package which is from .sql window window okay it looks something like this import this run this after it is done if i run this now after you run this, we will have the new column available, which is the running totals. At the end, if I just go here, you will see the running totals is available over here. Okay. Like this, we can have something like this also, which is conditional formatting. Uh, flag the high impact balls, such as either wicket or more than six runs, including the extra. So, so flag different bowl that is being done, which is either it is a wicket or it included the more than six runs. So uh, let's say ball by ball tier is equal to wall by wall df dot with column okay and i will have high impact i want to create the new column so when uh, i will have column which is this one run scored okay run scored plus yeah plus column extra runs is greater than six okay extra runs uh let me just 
is greater than is greater than six after that or I will have new let me just add the space here so that we can easily track it column polar wicket okay is equal to equal to true comma true okay otherwise wise false so what this does is basically so what this does is basically it checks the run score plus the extra runs so you you do the total of the run score plus the extra run if it is greater than six or any wicket that happened uh, while bowling that ball if it is true any in either of these condition is true then we return it as the true that means this is the high impact ball otherwise it is a false okay so basic conditional formatting if you have the basic understanding of python then you should be able to understand this if i run this uh, again it will we have the error uh, run score cannot be resolved so we have run score not a run score okay if i run this now uh, we were able to uh, create the new column high impact on top of data effect so this is what we do the basic transformation again uh, this depends on the business condition this depends on your database understanding so how much uh, data set and the columns that you understand and how you can create more structured way and extract the more value from it this is based on my understanding you can also go into this data frame you can try understanding all of these columns and think about how you can extract more insights by yourself okay this is where the actual data engineering and analyst shines because just by looking at the data you start need to think about what i can extract from this if you understand the cricket and if you have all of these columns available to you you need to think about how can i extract more information from this data what are the different ins points so you can find the strike rate of the player you can understand uh innings of the different overs how it impacts the overall performance you can understand how the winning toss can have the impact on the overall match things are considered as an insight so when you watch a cricket on the tv you get to see all of the statistics front of you you have to do all of these things in the back end to get all of these insights okay so this is what we will do it with the apache spark now once it is done you can do something like this which is ball by ball dot show i'll do this five action once you run this action then only all of these transformation block will get executed and the output will get printed to you till then no nothing will execute okay apache spark will create all of this kind of logical plan and the physical plan in the back end just to give you the final output so this is the entire graph that it creates in the back end and then you can print them by writing the action it will able to generate the final output so currently it is running all of this transformation blog in the back end and then it is giving you the final output again i have went into the detail about each and every single thing in my apache spark post uh, because this is the most in-depth course that you will find uh, on the apache spark with the databricks because i have put so much effort as you can see all of these nodes i have created by myself okay really want to understand the apache spark in depth this is the best course i have developed because i put five months building this course okay so as you can see this is the final output we have available here okay now we have to do the same operation for all of the different data frame and i have already written the code so that we don't waste time on to doing the same things so as you can see it over here this is for the match tf okay and for the match tf what i'm doing is that i'm importing some of the function year month and date for the first what i will do from the match date i will extract some of the values such as year month and day so that we can have the analysis on the year level month level and the day level then we can also create more conditional formatting which is the high margin so categorizing win margins into high medium and low so based on the win margin category we create the new column win margin if win margin is greater than 100 there is a column available in our data okay so if i go to the data dictionary you will see in the match you will have a column called as a win margin okay win margin is available that basically means how when a particular team won that match might have won that particular match based on the high margin so let's say they did not did not give any single wicket or they won the match with the higher runs something like that so if you understand the crickets you will have the understanding about the win margin because in basic terms how 
well a particular team were able to win that match so it can be based on the runs it can be based on the wickets okay it's really important that you understand the domain if you really want to understand the data because if you don't understand the cricket then all of these data might not make sense for you we have the win margin if it is greater than or equal to 100 then it means high if it is between 50 and 100 that means medium and otherwise it is low okay so we are just creating the new column then analyze the impact of the toss this is what we talked about okay so toss winner is equal to match winner that means yes otherwise no so the particular team also won the toss and the match we will write the yes otherwise no so all of these are the basic transformation blocks that we are thinking okay based on this existing data what i can extract and then you just do the show at the end i will just do it too okay i don't want to print all of this data if you run this it will the generate the final outcome this was for the match i will do it for player okay for the player again we have importing the lower and the regular expression that basically means first of all we will normalize and the clean the player name so if there are any uh, extra keywords uh, that are not needed into the player name what we will do we will do the regular expression and we will replace all of them with the empty value okay so if there are not needed keywords such as the dummy keywords or the garbage value we will replace it we are just cleaning this then handling the missing value for the batting hand and the balling hand with the unknown so over here what we are doing is that we are just filling the null values with the unknown whenever we don't have any value then categorizing player based on the batting hand so batting style is like if it is contains the left that is this player is a left handed otherwise it is a right handed again as per your understanding you can create all of these columns by yourself and then what i will do i will just do show to and this will create the entire transformation and the final action based on that so as you can see it created the new column country name batting style as you can see it is india the player name sc ganguly b mccallum okay uh date of birth is null left-handed bat right-handed bat batting style so based on the left-handed bat which is not the right string to store in the data we structure this column into the right-handed okay so that we will have like one type of proper string available inside our column so that it makes much more easier to understand at the end then we will do it for the player match okay so based on the different match player match contains the information about the player into that particular match so here we have what we are doing is that adding the veteran status so based on that player age okay if it is 35 if it is greater than 35 then we will add it as a veteran or not veteran same filter to include only players who played the match ex excluding the bench players so here you can exclude some of the players who did not bat but for now just just remove this we don't really need this okay all of the players for now okay then we have a dynamic columns to calculate the years since the debut that basically means uh, we are just uh person person who joined so what so so this basically so this basically means person who started cricket at the specific year from the current year so how many years have passed okay so we are creating the new column based on that and then we do the final show now uh, this will print all of the values i should have limited the show okay as you can see it is printing all of the values available in of the data set so for the team data let me just check the columns here so we have three information team sk team id and team name so we don't really have to do any transformation on top of it you can do the basic regular expression cleaning but team does not have a lot of columns okay we just have the three columns so we will not do any transformation for the team what you can do if you want to just sit and explore all of this data you can do the show and try understanding all of the column values okay this is the exercise that you can do it on the start so we were able to write the basic transformation code using the apache spark okay we did some basic transformation we read the data we created the struct type uh then based on that we wrote the transformation as per our understanding as an assignment what i will suggest you is to understand this data and think about what more you can extract and you can also use the chat gpt for that okay so what you can do is just you can copy the column name and ask chat gpt okay uh generate some insights or create a new column based on your understanding uh for the final value what you can what you can ask what you can ask chat gpt is that using this data set can you generate some insights and create the new columns and it will generate some code for you but before you ask the chat gpt i will highly encourage you to at least spend time and think by yourself if you have the understanding about the cricket that what i can extract from this data okay we have the two teams information available so can i find the winning probability based on one particular team when they match with some other team you can also do that you can also find some insights based on the country name you can also do it from the toss name toss winner there are so many information available like man of the match okay 
you can also find the information about that player like how many times he's been selected as a man of the match all of these things you can easily do that you can also categorize them okay like if the particular player has won like five men of the match you can select as as the high impact player if it is between like three to three to two okay it, if it is if it is between around less than five and more than three there is a medium impact player and if it is less than two then it might be low impact player okay so all of these things you can do it by yourself okay i just show you the basic syntax but this is what you can do it by yourself to analyze the data now what i want to do i want to do some sql analysis okay i was able to write all of these code by myself i did transform our data now i want to generate some insights from this between the transformation we cleaned our data now let's try finding the insights and for that we need to convert these data frame into the sql table type format okay and for that you can do something like this so this is my ball by ball df dot create or replace global temp view this is the syntax available on apache spark if you want to convert this into the temporary view to write the sql queries and i will just give the table name as ball by ball okay like this i will do for all of the data frame which is match df dot create or replace temporary view match okay mat ch same for the player df player df dot create or replace global create or create or replace global temp view player okay then i have the player mass df dot create or replace global temp view have the player player match and then i have the team df dot create or replace global temp view i will do team okay uh for each and every data frame what we just did is just we converted them into the sql table so that we can query it now what i can do i will start writing the sql queries for this okay so first of all let's have the insights such as top scoring batsman per season is equal to spark dot sql this is the syntax available where if you want to write the sql queries you write it between three quotes like this so you can write the multiple line uh, code and then i can just start writing my code like this which is here just put this yes like this like this i'll write my query so what i really want to find top scoring batsman per season okay so as i understand i want the top scoring batsman and the season so i can group by the season and find the top scoring batsman okay so pretty simple select i'll do the star from first of all i will get the data from what is this from ball by ball this is okay this has all of the information about the ball okay then uh, let me just format this properly first after this i will do the join on match because match has information about the different match id so as m m dot match id and then i will give this as b so what i'll do b dot match match id is equal to m dot match id if you want again you can understand about this data from here so as you can see for the ball as the match available which is a unique idea of the ipl match and in the match i have the information about all of the matches that has happened what i really want to find is that top scoring batsman so i need to go from the ball to the player information so that i can find the player information and the match information okay so this is the syntax available and then i have the join player match i will go first on the match level on that particular player which is a pm on m dot match id is equal to first i will join join it on the match which is pm dot match id and okay in this particular match i also need player was batting at that time so that basically means we have the column in the ball by ball as a striker okay uh, if i go here if i show you is this column available as a striker this basically means each player was playing that particular ball at that particular time because player exchanged the pitch there is a, there is the there is the column available as a striker so this basically tells us that 
this player was playing that particular ball at that time. I want to join this information with my PM dot player ID. If you again understand the basics, this player was facing that particular ball, which was a striker at that particular time. So I'm able to get the player information who was playing at that particular ball. Okay, on the ball level. Okay, I'm going like very granular information. So we have the player, player match, then the match and the ball level. So we have all of this information available that we already understood. We are going like in detail. We are finding the join connection between all of them to find the final analytics. Then we have the player information. P on P dot player ID is equal to PM dot player ID. Okay, so I'm just directly joining them onto the player. Now what I want is I want top scoring batsman per season. Okay, so I can have like P dot player name. I will have the player name. Then M dot season year. Uh, again, I can just show you here season year. So in the matches, I have the season year so I can have this information. Okay. And then I want to have the sum of runs scored as total runs. Something like this. I can do the group by for these two. So group by E dot player name for my M dot season year and order by I can also do the order by M dot season year comma total runs in the descending order something like this okay again if you don't have if you're not able to understand this particular thing that means you need to understand the SQL syntax first so go into my basic foundation course is a Python SQL Again, go for the data warehouse course to understand the data warehouse and the Spark course if you want to learn everything about the Spark. So, I just show you the basic example. If I run this, hopefully this runs. Okay, I am getting the error. Table ball by ball cannot be found. And uh, I was able to execute this. Let me execute this again. Uh, ball by ball is not able to found. It should, able, should be available. Schema catalog. Okay. I think we made a mistake here. Instead of global temp view, the syntax is create or replace replace temp view. Instead of global temp view, global temp view is a completely different topic. So I'm just going to replace this with the temp view. Okay, if I run this, and now if I run this, this should work. Wow, well, please. It's connecting, it is executing this command. Okay, so we have the error as, a, as like B striker cannot be resolved. So if I go on top, let me just check here. Do we have the striker information? We have the striker information available into the DF. If I print the column name, which is uh, of ball by ball DF dot dot columns. If I run this, do we have the striker information? We have the striker SK. Okay, uh, it is available here. So that means we change some parts here. So as you can see, uh, instead of striker, we have the striker here. We also have striker SK. Okay, let me see this. So we do. So in this column, do so we have the striker information available? Let me check. We have the striker information available. Then I'll see. Okay. So we have the spelling mistake. S-T-I-K-E-R. It is S-T-R-I-K-E-R. Now if I run this, okay, it was able to run this particular thing. And now if I do show five, just want to get the top fives. Top scoring batsman per season. Okay. So let's wait for this to run. Uh, it will take one second, two second, three second, four second. Let me have water. It can also hydrate. So as you can see, we have the player name, season, year, and the total runs. And just by looking at the data, you can understand this. We have the season, year information. Okay, SE Mars. Okay, to code the total 614 runs. We have the Gautam Gambhir, Jai Surya, Watson, and the Smith. For 2008 season, these were the players who scored the highest run. Let's do the show 
30 okay just to have more visibility on the data and see what do we get in the final output let's wait okay so again we will have more information available so for 2008 we have all of these players available from Mars to Tendulkar Tendulkar is around 188 so all of these again top scoring batsmen per season okay you will also filter on top of it you can also have 2008 2009 all of these data are available we have the data till 2017 so you can also do that there was the one part of the analytics like this you can also do more analytics on top of it so i'll just get the sql queries this is the economical bowler power play okay so which bowler was most economical in the power play power play is basically uh, most of the filters are within the circle only two players are allowed as per my knowledge so which bowler was most economical in the power play and again the query is pretty simple we get the player name for the player we get the total run scored we get the bowler wicket okay total wickets taken and then uh, we have the we join the ball player match and a player where over id is less than 6 grouped by the player name count greater than 120 okay we need the total count and we just order by this if i run this once you see the output you will understand what this query actually did if you have the basic sql this is very simple query all we are doing is that we are just joining the columns based on the similar columns getting them aggregating them and counting them okay so what we are doing this we are getting the average runs code and the total wickets taken by a player in that particular over so as you can see we have like Sena Nayak, okay, then Narayan, MC Gret, Malinga. So, this is the average run per board. And as per this, we have like this guy who gave like the least run, then this guy gave the second least. So, this is giving us the final analytics based on the average run scored. We can replace this to equal to one. So, count. So, which is the total bowler wicket is equal to one or greater. So, based on the wicket, also we can modify this query. And this will give us uh, every baller who at least took one wicket. So let me see if we have any wicket or not. Okay, we don't have it. But these are the economical bowler that gave us less runs. And as you go down, it will keep increasing. Okay, this you can find more insights. So you can also have the toss impact on the individual matches. Very simple. We get the match, toss winner, toss name and the match winner. So based on the particular match and the toss winning, we understand that, okay, Royal Challengers, uh, this is the toss winner, chose the field, Kolkata won, okay, match outcome was lost. So, even if they won the toss, they lost. Chennai Super Kings chose the bat, uh, they won, so we have the one. Like this, you can start identifying the impact of particular toss onto the match. And then, uh, we can have query like this, which is like average runs in a bin. So, when a particular team won a match, okay, or a particular player won the match, how much impact did they have based on their runs on the winning of the team? So, is the player average run scored and the innings played? So, based on the winning of that particular match, how much impact did they have on the final outcome? The joints are pretty simple. These are the standard joints that we've been doing till now. And as you can see, we have the Rashid Khan, okay, which is average runs in the win, and then we have the innings played. This outcome is giving us the average runs in that particular winning match. Okay, so this guy scored like average six runs. We have the two runs. So this was about like using SQL to get the final analytics on top of it. This is not the analysis video. I just wanted to give you the basic idea of it. Now we can also do the final visualization. So it is something like this. Again, I don't want to go into the detail of the visualization code because this is the basics of Python. This is more towards the data science and the data analyst, but I just want to show how we can visualize this data. So using the economical power play, okay, we will convert this into the pandas data frame and then we will visualize this using the matplotlib. I'll just run this. You see the matplotlib, we will define the figure size, we will define our uh, dimensions and the column names. We are getting the error as PLT is not defined. So I think syntax, let me just get the import matplotlib and it is basically import matplotlib.pyplot like this. Okay, I'll copy this, paste it here. And if I run this now, this should be able to plot the entire graph of that particular analysis, which is the economical ballers. 
on to the proper graph. So again, this is the bar chart. As you can understand, we provide the ball name, then average run score, and the, we provide the color, and all of these are the label information. So as you can see, we have the average runs per bowl. So these are the top 10 economical bowlers in the power play. We have the SM Hardwood, Ankit Sony, like this. We have all these players available that you can easily plot. Just like this, you can also have the impact of the toss. So the data frame that we created toss impact on the individual matches. Again, we provide the X and the Y. SNS is not defined. Let me import report C phone as SNS. I think this is the syntax. Yeah. If I run this, hopefully this runs. And as you can see, this is the won and the match outcome which is the won and loss number of matches and who won the toss okay on the x-axis we have the teams who won the toss and these are the information suggests if they won the match or not so as you can see uh for the royal challenger bank these are the dummy information we don't have about it for this graph we can understand that royal challenger whenever they win the toss they are more likely to uh win the final match here we have the Mumbai Indians. Whenever they win the toss, they are more likely to lose the match. Like this, you can just understand based on the graph. Okay, Pune Warriors. We have all of these old data available, but just by the visualization, you can understand the outcome of the toss on the final uh, impact of the winning match. Like this, you can have more graphs created. So this is the average runs in wins. This is the information about the average runs scored by the batsmen in the winning matches. Like this, you can also have the information about the scores by the venue. So based on the different venues available, I can get the information from the SQL queries. And what I can do on top of this, I can just plot this entire graph as a bar chart. And you will be able to see this entire information here. Okay, let's wait. As you can see, in the Burbal Stadium, we have the highest score matches. Then we have the Saurashtra Brigade Association, Punjab Brigade Association, Green Park. From the highest to score, lowest score matches based on the different uh, venue of the stadium. So you can have the dismissal types, which is basically a person, how they got out uh, while playing the bat. So let's see this. Let's wait for this. As you can see, we have not, avail not available data for this, but as you can see, we, ha we have like, Someone who got out based on the catch. We have the bold, run out, keeper catch, LBW stumped, caught by bold, hit wicket. All of these are the information. is basically giving us the information about the dismissal of that particular player. Like this, we can also have like team toss winning performance. Okay. Based on the different teams. So if I do this. Again, SQL queries. I can just go through this if you want to understand it. Now, this is the team performance after winning the toss. So we have like the Chennai Super Kings perform the best. Mumbai Indians, Kolkata Knight Riders, based on the, whenever they win the toss, this is how they perform, okay? Again, this was entire thing about this far, okay? So again, you can go through this. The goal of this video was to give you the quick overview about the spark and how to utilize the function. Uh, I gave you understanding from the getting the data to reading the data, defining into the proper structure format, transformation of the data, doing some basic SQL analysis, and then visualizing that data at the end so that you can have the basic understanding of what is going in the data. This is not the just data engineering. This included everything from data engineering, data science to data analytics. We did all of these things into one project using Apache Spark. Okay, so center of this entire video was the Apache Spark to teach you how to write the different syntax. Okay? This is the reason. This is the reason I did not go deep into the plotting. I did not go deep into the uh, writing SQL queries. All of these things, all of these things are prerequisite while you're learning Apache Spark. If you are a very beginner and if you have no understanding about all of these things, and if you still watch this video till here, then you can definitely check out my courses. We have the courses available on Python, SQL, Data Warehouse using Snowflake and Apache Spark using Databricks. These are the in-depth courses, okay? These are the all of the in-depth courses where you will get two projects onto the Apache Spark. We have like this project available on AWS and project available onto the Azure. All of these are the modules covered. On top of that, you will also get all of this in-depth notes so that you can easily revise your topic. Put a lot of efforts into building this course. These courses are mainly for the people who want to understand the particular thing in depth and learn. So if you want to learn Apache Spark in depth, if you want to learn Python, Data Warehouse, then you can enroll for this course. 
I will keep doing all of these videos on the YouTube channel where I show the actual project execution from start to end. So this was one of the projects I wanted to give you the quick overview of the Apache Spark and how we can write the code. So this was everything about this video. I hope you learned something new from this video. I just wanted to give you the good overview of Apache Spark if you are a beginner. So if you love this video and if you learned something new, then don't forget to hit the like button. Share this video with the person who might want to use this. You know what you want to see next in the project. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.